Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to ZR Chess. I have something um, I think is pretty important today to show you. It's on LeeChess.org and today we're going to be going over their chess analytics. They call it Chess Insights. And it's analytics into your gameplay. You can change it between different variants you play. And it's really helpful to see how you've been playing, how maybe you can do better. And it gives you a good option to see different aspects of your game as you're going along. So we'll go ahead and jump into it here. Do, do. Let's do that. All right. So we go to our username up at the top right. And we hit profile. And it'll obviously take it to our profile page. And from here, we're going to hit this button here, Chess Insights, Analytics from Your Games. This will not show up on mobile but it does show up on desktop, laptop, you know. So go ahead and click that. And once you're in this screen, this is our this is our chess insights that they've created for us. You might have games that haven't showed up yet and it'll just you just it'll just give you a notification to click to upload all your games. So what we're looking at here is graphs and numbers uh, for all you geeks out there, which if you're playing chess, you're probably like me, you're a numbers guy. And you can see how you play in different situations. For instance, this the default that it gives you is average sent upon loss by variant. <laughs> so let me go ahead and explain what that is because this is going to be a pretty important indicator for you. Sent upon loss is how you do next to the computer, next to the engine. So let's say you make a move that's it does it all by half pawns. So let's say you do a mistake and that costs you five points off of what the computer would have done because you lost a piece. So they go by pawn points, which is how you measure everything anyway. A pawn's worth one, a knight's worth three, a bishop's worth three, a rook's worth five, a queen's worth uh, eight, and the king's worth ten, right? So it's measuring you on sent upon. So if you make an inaccuracy, it might cost you half a point. If, it, if you make a blunder, it might cost you three points or five points. And what this is showing you, the higher the number, the more mistakes you made throughout the game. So sent upon loss, we can go ahead and it is synonymous with our percentage, our point marker of mistakes we've made throughout the game. So as you can see, we can go ahead and infer from this. I've got bullet games, blitz, rapid, classical. We don't care about three check. That's just a variant. So looking at these four here, we can tell that when I play bullet, I'm a lot worse than when I play classical. And, you know, you might think about these things and think maybe I'm better at moving quick than I am at moving slow. And this clearly shows that's not the case. Clearly, the more time I have to think during classical, the more time I give to the thought process, the less mistakes I make because my average sent upon is, upon is lost is lower per game. So that's what this is showing us here. And this graph right here just shows how many games we've had or how many moves we've had that it's doing this off of. So I don't play a lot of bullet, so you know, 57 moves, that's probably a couple of games. All right, so that's one of these we can do. Now we can go ahead and change these around and have fun with it. Now there are presets they give us, which is pretty fun. We can see, do I gain more rating points against weaker or stronger opponents? So we can look here and see that against opponents of similar rating or weaker rating, I usually gain the most points, which means I'm probably winning more versus when I'm playing stronger or much stronger, I'm losing points because I'm playing somebody much stronger than me, so I'm mostly losing. Now, if I was beating them every now and then, this might average out to a good number, but it just uh, goes by how you're doing. And this is a brutally honest. You can see numbers, and it doesn't pull punches. It's just complete honesty, so you can see how you're doing in different scenarios. How quickly do I move each piece in bulls and blitz games? And That's not really important, I don't think, how quickly you're moving it. It's still not telling us how we're doing. However, we can see move time and we can see game result. Let's see what this does is. So when we're moving, when we're taking longer to move, we get more victory. And when we're taking less to move, we get defeat. And this is a weird one to look at. Um, so let's go ahead and clear that filter. 
Now we can see win rate of my favorite openings is white. This is one of the great presets they have. And we can see there's quite a lot of them here. The English, I'm winning 67% of the time. I'm not doing so great at the Queen's Clown game or the Old Benoni, which Old Benoni I just do to play around with, so it makes sense. Um, different Queen's Pawn games. And these codes right here, like D00, A40, A45, these are universal codes for different chess openings. You can look them up online anywhere and they'll tell you what they are or you can look up your opening like the English opening on Google and number you can look up English opening number and it'll come up with A22 for you so you know what to look up or something like that and it's very helpful so you can see um, different openings and how you're doing in each one obviously I, I do better in others than the not a Queen's Gambit declined. I'm not so great at, which I already knew, and it's it's good to see on paper. And we see here these are two Queen's Gambit declines. One's D30 and one's D06. Not sure what the difference is, but you can bet if I look it up, which I will look it up after this, it's going to show me a subtle difference in between, and that will give me a clear understanding when I'm playing the Queen's Gambit decline. There's one move I'm doing here that I'm winning 67% of the time. And there's another move I'm doing here where I'm only winning 25% of the time. And that's a huge difference based on a little bit of gameplay. And so looking at this, I can go ahead and infer that there's something I'm doing wrong some of the time and right some of the time. So when I look up both of these different openings, it's really going to give me a clear vision on what I need to do going forward. Or maybe I need to work on this kind of opening here. And it, it can be really helpful for us that way. So this is a great one. How often do I punish blunders made by the opponent during each game phase? They use this one called opportunism. And opportunism is when they make a blunder and how often we take advantage of that. So this is during the game play, during the opening. I clearly take advantage more of it than the end game, probably because my time's getting lower toward the end. So when time's getting lower, I'm not going to catch those as much. We can also do this opportunism by do, 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 variant and this will be interesting because we'll see bullet I'm not taking very much opportunism uh, I actually peak at rapid here I'm taking advantage of their blunders most in rapid than even than I am in classical which is very interesting because you think of classical when I'm thinking more about it then I would I would catch it so there's something going on here in this rapid I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but it's it's definitely a flag because these are all at 50 in the 50 percentages, and then Rapid's at 70. So there's something in Rapid that is doing better than others between the 10 and 15 minute mark of gameplay. That's really interesting. So stuff like that can really can really make us think and figure out. I'm gonna figure out why that is. Uh, then we can see do I gain rating when I don't castle kingside and their rating gain. Let's just say game result Castling kingside actually let's that's what these filters are for we can do our own stuff. So let's look here and we'll go to Let's go to a variant we'll hit rapid and When I'm playing rapid I, I do this because I got a good amount of games 26 games of rapid on here and we can see game results by castle inside. So we can see when I castle king side, I win 48% of the time. When I go weird and castle queen side, I win 100% of the time. And when I don't castle at all, I lose 100% of the time, which is crazy. I mean, the numbers are kind of small here. You know, I've got 21 games where I castle king side because that's normal, and only three games and two games for the other two. But this is still telling when it's 100% on each. Castle and Queen side has worked well for me in Rapid. Now let's take Rapid off and just look at everything. See, this kind of evens it more out now that I have more games on here. So we've got a couple, a few hundred games. So still, Castle and Queen side, I'm still doing a percentage better than I am in King side. And no castling, I'm doing worse, which, you know, you should always try to castle if you can. In the London, sometimes I don't. And. That might be why that is, and blunders cause me to not be able to castle later, and that's that's 51% probably right there. So, what else do they have on here? When I trade queens, how do games end? This is a very important one, because a lot of people are scared to trade queens, 
And so if you can, if you are good at trading queens, which this will tell you, then you can use that to your advantage and try to trade queens with your opponent and get positional play and win. So forgetting correspondence in three check again, we can see here in bullet, this is, this is just a line straight down the, straight down here, a slope. So we can see in bullet, obviously when I trade queens, I am not doing very good. 20% of the time I win. And this we can infer here because I don't have much time. And when you're low on time, you want to attack as easily as possible. And what's better attacking than a queen? Because if I have a if I have a knight and a bishop to his pawn in bullet, there's still a good chance I'm gonna lose on time. If I have a knight and a queen to his pawn, I'm gonna do a lot better. So even a knight and a queen to his pawn and his queen, I might do a lot better. So trading queens in bullet might not be such a great idea because of the time aspect. But then we can see in classical when I have a lot of time, trading queens has been very beneficial for me because I can think about positional play. I can think about where all my other pieces need to be to attack the king and smother him. So we can see here the more time I have to think the better I do with Queens and this is probably the case for most people but it might not be the case for you and so you can look at these and see and decide for yourself what your strategy should be going forward or if there's something you need to work on maybe you need to work on working without your Queen or maybe you need to really avoid trading Queens just because you do a whole lot better with your Queens on the board um, let's look average rating how well do I move each piece in the opening this is just average center pawn loss by piece moved in the opening. So, obviously, moving the king in the opening, we've got the worst center pawn loss. That's because you should not be moving your king in the opening. Just don't do it if you don't have to. And the queen, pretty much the same way. I shouldn't be moving the queen out in the opening. So, this is kind of telling, you know. But there's a lot of different ways you can mess with this on here and finagle it to do whatever you want. And I suggest you play around with it and try to find out different different things about yourself and your own chess play. But this is Lee Chess Insights Analytics. And there's not a whole lot of information out there about it, I found. I was trying to find out different ways people do things together and make their own filters. But there's not a whole lot of information out there. I haven't even seen a video out there before. And, and so I wanted to make this to show you guys that this is out there. You should be using this if you're serious about uh, getting better at chess and find out how you can do better. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know uh, about chess analytics, chess insights, if you've seen this before. And if this was helpful, go ahead and like, subscribe, and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching, guys.